presenting this next paper on creating and analyzing multi-emitter environment test signals uh, with commercial off-the-shelf equipment. So this is the agenda for today's presentation. I'll talk about the problem statement, which is uh, today's cluttered spectral environment and complex spectral environment. I'll then show how you can create realistic multi-emitter radar test signals. And then to that, we'll also show how we can create a mix of kind of uh, radar signals as well as communication test signals. And lastly, we'll examine uh, coexistence issues between radar and wireless uh, test signals. So in terms of um, the problem statement, you know, today's spectral environment is becoming more complex and more congested, uh, as kind of illustrated here. Spectrum is becoming increasingly crowded. Uh, some of these signals can be complex, they can be dynamic. And as such, this can present uh, testing challenges and testing hardware before it actually gets deployed in the field. And so what we'd like to show in this presentation is an approach to creating multi-emitter test signals, realistic test signals, that can be a combination of radar and comm signals. And this kind of illustrates the flow that we're going to be using in the presentation. Um, we're going to start out using simulation uh, to create radar signals or wireless signals. Uh, these could also be other types of signals. And to these simulated emitters, we're also going to capture signals with our digitizer and our PXA signal analyzer. And these captured signals can, be then, com can then be combined with these simulated wireless emitters uh, to create kind of a composite output waveform that can be downloaded to an AWG and uh, also using a PSG, we can create the multi-emitter signal. So this shows the basic flow we'll be using. Uh, this shows the test setup that we'll be using in our paper. Um, so what we have is an AXIE chassis uh, that has a controller. And we've got our system simulation uh, tool, system view installed on the controller. We also have a digitizer, the M9703 digitizer, and we'll show how to capture signals with that digitizer to add in with the simulated emitters. And then we're going to play this back out using our 8190 uh, AWG. On the right-hand side, we have a PSG, which we're going to be using to create the test signal. Uh, there's a splitter here, and part of this is kind of lopped off, but there's a splitter. Two splitter outputs are going to do two different PXAs, which are used for wideband down conversion so that we can digitize the IF with the digitizer. So this shows the test signals that are being captured with the digitizer. Um, and it's going into two, two different PXAs. The left one is uh, an LFM chirped radar signal that's centered at 10.1 gigahertz. The right one is a barker coded radar waveform that is centered at 9.8 gigahertz. So these are down converted by the PXAs. They're run into two different channels of the digitizer and then digitized. Now once the signals have been digitized, they can be read into simulation. And to do that, we're going to use our VSA uh, source elements here, which will read in both of the recordings that were captured. These are read into simulation. And then once they're read into simulation, we can sum them and combine them with other emitters. So in this case, we've chosen six different uh, radar emitters that are being simulated. And then uh, each of the emitters are then resampled and combined using the signal combiner element. So this effectively takes these eight input signals, resamples, and combines them into one composite output waveform that can then be downloaded to our AWG. So now once we've downloaded the signal to the AWG, this is kind of what it looks like. Uh, so the signals have been downloaded. And uh, in our case, we're interested in generating an X-band signal centered at 10 gigahertz. And so to do that, we're generating I and Q waveforms out of the AWG. The I and Q are then being modulated onto a 10 gigahertz carrier using a vector PSG. And so this shows the resulting output signal of the PSG being measured on a PXA signal analyzer. So you notice the different radar signals that are being shown here uh, with varying bandwidths, varying amplitudes. This shows a different display in simulation before we actually downloaded the waveforms. And I thought this would be interesting to share because here we're showing the main time display 
Um, and then on the top, again, we're showing the spectrums. But here we're showing the main time displays. And you can see that the radar signals that are being created and um, um, also being captured and read in the simulation have different pulse widths. They have different PRIs. Uh, and they have different delays. And so this is a time domain representation. Some of the considerations to keep in mind is that um, with the capture and the playback solution, um, there's a finite amount of time that can be captured and a finite amount of time that can be played back. And so this is really a function of the physical memory on the capture side as well as the physical memory on the playback side. Uh, this is not uh, real-time capability. Also, you know, we're doing simulation to create these emitters. Uh, but having said that, the simulations can be done ahead of time to create a set of bin files, and then the bin files can then be downloaded to the AWG. Okay, so that was one case study. And the next one I'd like to show is uh, kind of highlighting the multi-channel nature of this digitizer. So this digitizer is actually an eight-channel phase coherent digitizer. And to show um, a multi-channel capture, we're going to generate a signal. We're going to down convert it with the PXA down to an IF. And at the output of the IF, we're going to use a splitter um, to split it into five different signals, which are run into five different input channels on the digitizer. So these are the five signals that were captured and digitized or digitized and captured uh, with the 9703 digitizer. Um, so starting on the left-hand side, one of the signals was a radar signal. So here we're showing the spectrum. Uh, here we're showing the pulsed uh, nature of that radar signal. Um, to the right of that is another signal that was digitized and captured, an LTE signal, uh, showing the spectrum and the constellation and the error vector magnitude. Uh, here's another emitter, an edge emitter, uh, spectrum again, a constellation EVM. Uh, we also had, as one of the signals, a custom OFDM signal. Uh, so you can see the constellation of that, as well as the EVM. And this last one is a WCMA uh, signal, and you can see the spectrum and the code domain power characteristics of that WCMA signal. So these are the signals that we're capturing with the digitizer. We brought them into simulation. And now we're going to download them to the AWG. So the way we would read these signals into simulation once they've been captured is using the VSA source elements. So we have the captured recordings on channel 1, channel 2, 3, 4, and 5 of that digitizer. And again, that digitizer is an eight-channel phase coherent uh, digitizer. Uh, these captured signals are then, are then being uh, resampled and combined into one waveform. And this one waveform is being downloaded to channel one of the AWG. So this AWG is really a two-channel AWG. Uh, previously, we had shown generating I and Q on those two channels. And we did that because we wanted to generate a 10 gigahertz signal. In this case, we're going to use the 5 gigahertz bandwidth of the AWG to download one signal to channel one and a completely different signal to channel two, uh, since we're interested in the signal within the five gigahertz of bandwidth. So channel one is playing back the captured signals. On channel two, we're going to create some emitters. And we're going to do that in simulation. Uh, so again, we have an L-band radar signal, WCDMA signal, S-band radar signal, another WCDMA signal, and a C-band radar signal. And then these are resampled, um, and the output is downloaded to channel two. So channel one is playing back the captured signal. Channel two is playing back the simulated emitters. And then by combining uh, channel one and channel two with a, a, a power combiner, which isn't shown on the slide, we can create a composite uh, spectrum which is comprised of you know, the emitters that were recorded with the digitizer, as well as the emitters that were simulated in system view. And so this is the composite spectrum centered at 2.5 gigahertz uh, over a 3 gigahertz span. So this is a very wideband uh, spectral view.
So this is um, a picture of a test setup um, for an, another case study that we're going to be showing. And again, we have our AXIE chassis with 8190. There's a controller uh, that is installed, and this is what we have our system view and software installed on. Um, and then we have the PSG for uh, modulating the INQ to a higher um, carrier frequency. Uh, we've also got a wideband oscilloscope, a 62 gigahertz scope, and this is actually what we're showing on the show floor here. And I'll talk to the types of signals that we're creating and analyzing. And then we have a PXA signal analyzer for tuning in and demodulating the uh, comms emitters that we're generating. Um, so this is a signal that we created with that test setup, and again, this is what we're showing on the floor here. Uh, if you're interested in more follow-up on this. Um, but the composite signal is comprised of an L-band radar signal, which is kind of shown on the left-hand side. And then we have our emitters, our wireless emitters, commercial off-the-shelf, uh, LTE, there's EDGE, uh, GSM, WCDMA. And then we have our S-band radar. And you notice that we also have another WCDMA emitter that is parked inside the band of the radar emitter. And we thought that it would be kind of interesting to look at coexistence issues between a radar signal and a comm signal. Uh, because a radar signal, you might be blasting out a strong radar signal, maybe from a ship, listening for a weak radar return signal. And if you're near land, uh, maybe you have an infrastructure that has wireless emitters that are radiating. And those wireless emitters might be interfering with a weak return radar signal. And then conversely, of course, you might have a strong radar signal that might be interfering with the comm signal. And so by parking this WCDMA signal in the radar's bandwidth, we can kind of study coexistence issues. Um, so now once we've generated this wideband spectrum with radar and comms emitters, we can use our PXA to basically zoom into each of the wireless emitters. And so that's exactly what we've done here. We've tuned into this LTE emitter, which is on the left-hand side. And you can see that we're demodulating the LTE emitter. Uh, we've annotated the air vector magnitude um, for the demodulation results. And then likewise for this next emitter, the edge emitter, uh, we're showing the demodulation results with the EVM that's being measured. Here's GSM with an EVM of about 0.33 and WCMA uh, with an EVM of about 0.85. And so if you're a radar engineer, you may not be particularly interested in demodulating a signal. Uh, but one of the reasons we show this is because it shows the signal fidelity of the signals that can be created with this AWG. It's a precision AWG. And so air vector magnitude is kind of a measure of the amount of air that a transmitter might be introducing. And you'll notice that the EVMs that we're showing here for these, you know, for LTE, EDGE, GSM, and WCMA are fairly low even though we have a spectrum that has multiple wireless signals and radar signals uh, kind of combined. So it shows the signal fidelity of the AWG. I talked a little bit about coexistence, uh, potential coexistence issues between radar and comm signals. And so this slide kind of highlights that. So this is the, uh, the signals that were on the far right-hand side, the S-band radar signal that had the WCMA signal parked in its bandwidth. And, um, and then here, we're demodulating this WCMA signal. So unlike the WCMA signal that we showed previously that had a very low EVM, we can see that this radar signal is uh, clearly degrading this WCMA signal. You can see it on the dispersion in the constellation. And you can also see it in the EVM, or the air vector magnitude, which has kind of crept up to a 10% level, uh, significantly higher than what we'd shown previously. And this is a direct result of the radar uh, signal interfering with the WCMA signal. If you look closely also, you can see that the WCMA signal is also interfering with the radar signal in terms of the chirp phase and the chirp frequency characteristics. So in summary, uh, we talked about uh, the problem statement, which is today's spectrum is becoming more complex. It's being, becoming more uh, cluttered. Uh, you might have different types of signals that might be agile signals that are dynamic. 
And, um, and these are potentially sources of interference with your hardware once your hardware has been deployed in the field. And so what we've shown here is the ability to create uh, realistic test signals, multi-emitter test signals in the lab environment. So effectively you can test your hardware in the lab environment before you deploy the hardware to the field. Um, another use case might be you deploy hardware in the field, you find that there's a problem with some signal scenario, and you want to recreate that signal scenario in the lab environment to kind of ring out the problem that was observed and maybe um, enhance your algorithms or your hardware to be able to um, effectively deal with that scenario. Um, the signals that we created uh, showed an approach where you might want to create a mix of radar and communication signals. Um, and in addition, you may also want to combine captured signals with created signals. So you might have, um, for the captured signals, there might be two different cases, capturing a signal in the field, bringing it into the lab environment, and then to that, adding other emitters. Or you might have some custom test equipment or an existing system that you have in your lab environment, and you want to capture the signal and be able to leverage that signal uh, moving forward with this approach. So our approach uh, involved using our digitizer, our eight-channel phase coin digitizer, the M9703. It also involved using our precision M8190 AWG. And then we created emitters in system view, our system simulation tool. Um, we consider this to be kind of a flexible and reconfigurable approach. It's using COTS um, test equipment. It's using COTS uh, simulation environment tools. And that provides a level of flexibility in being able to address um, different types of signal scenarios. Um, and uh, we think it's kind of a cost-effective and a suitable approach for R&D lab environments. And you can look at it as a way of maybe helping to future-proof your test equipment investment. You buy test equipment based on signal scenarios that you're aware of today. Uh, but moving forward, you might have different needs in being able to create other signal scenarios. And so this provides a level of flexibility. So with that, I'd like to open it up for any questions that you might have. Question? Uh, for a really wide band signal? Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah, be, yeah, that's a great question. So, um, so there's a couple different, couple different things. So, we showed an approach, you know, in generating up to five gigahertz of bandwidth, right? And in that five gigahertz of bandwidth, you might have different emitters. Another approach is you might want to be chirping a signal, maybe over a gigahertz or two gigahertz of bandwidth. So that's another type of radar signal or wideband signal that could be created, and one that we're showing on the show floor. Um, in addition, you might have different bands of frequency that you want to create to create an overall effective, you know, let's say DC to 12 gigahertz. And so you might use one or two channels of the AWG to maybe generate five gigahertz worth of spectrum and then use another blade, another uh, 8190 AWG to generate I and Q and then modulate that I and Q onto an X-band carrier for the higher frequency component of that spectral environment. Okay, good question. Uh, Tom, did you have a question? Uh, you have yeah. Yeah, that's a good question. So the question was, we had five channels coming into the multi-channel digitizer. We we're trying to show, you know, the eight phase coherent channels. Uh, rather than having five different down converters, we just down converted one signal and then split the IF into. F just a splitter. Yeah, just to show, you know, digitizing five different channels. Of course, if you wanted to, you could have different down converters, down converting to an IF, and then digitizing each of the IFs with different down converters. So with that, I think I've um, come up on my time limit. I'd like to thank you for your time today. Thank you.